Welcome to Graveyard. Thanks for coming in on such short notice. Have you met Nick Stokes? Hey, night shift's been wild all week. We could use another live body. Nick's one of our finest CSIs. I think you'll work well together. No time for a tour of the lab, though. There's a fresh crime scene waiting for you. Let's use the mobile analysis unit. Fine. Just be sure to fill it up afterwards. If you leave now, you should arrive at daybreak. Good luck out there. Thanks. Okay, partner. Ready when you are. LVFD notified us as soon as they put out the fire. Our Vic's that former cabbie, current charcoal briquette. Looks like a flash fire to me. Hot and quick. Fires like that don't happen without help. Looks like this area is clean. Way to be thorough. Not the right tool for this. Uh-oh. Looks like somebody snagged their clothes on this fence. Possibly the perp. Hmm, looks like skin. Let's get the lab's opinion.
A good idea to photograph the crime scene. It helps to provide reference for us later on. It makes it easier to reconstruct how it went down. Good job. This area is clean. <laughs> Smells like gasoline, but my nose is not a lab. We'll make sure. Look at that critter. That'll put a smile on Grissom's face. See if you can catch it without harming it, of course. When we're done here, I'll get the cab towed to the garage. We'll do the interior there. Controlled environment. You'll want to drag the partial over a full print to make sure they match up. Hey, even in Vegas a guy can get lucky now and then. Our prints belong to this Edsel character. Not much of a record. Petty larceny, vagrancy. Psych profile indicates antisocial tendencies, probably starting with his parents for naming him after a car. Last known address, Phoenix, Arizona. But somehow, I don't think this turpentine can drifted into Vegas all on its lonesome. Okay, that's a wrap for the mobile lab. Tow truck's been called for the cab. Should arrive in a while. Meanwhile, let's take this buggy back to CSI. Match on the footprint, common athletic shoes.
Now, you don't quite have a match there. Little details make all the difference when you're doing a comparison. When you're sure, ask me for a confirmation. Mobile equipment can't match it. We'll try back at the lab. Much larger database. Sure, I'll send a team right out. I have an unusual autopsy finding for you. The victim was a racist. These tattoos are all white supremacist symbols. No, though if he'd lived a while, they'd likely have finished the job. These burns are consistent with an intense sudden fire that kind of flares up fast and burns out the same way. Immediate cause of death? Asphyxiation. Vic inhaled toxic fumes, particulate matter, and vomit, the latter resulting from the toxic fume reaction. Essentially, he choked to death aggravated by shock and abetted by the alcohol blood level over the legal limit for any driver, much less one behind the wheel of a cab. I'd say last night between 9 and 10 p.m. Can't notify the parents. They died five years ago, driving drunk. Late brother, cirrhosis of the liver. Lovely when a family has a shared interest. I have fingerprints for you and DNA, of course. Running those fingerprints may strike gold, or anyway, DUIs. Yes, everything on that table is set aside for you. I've no need for it here. I've got nothing new to report on the Vic. Be nice to know who this circled woman is. Baba had a little attitude towards her, it seems.
Hey guys, any luck with your red plastic what's it? Our new fish here found a match to some artificial turf. But does this really look like artificial turf to you? Well, it's brittle, badly faded. Life expectancy for artificial turf? 15 to 25 years. So this is way old. Newer turfs are UV protected. So it's old, it's had hard use, and suffered exposure to UV. Theme park? Miniature golf course, maybe? Maybe. I'll get brass to check out any old miniature golf courses that used red putting greens. Red greens? That anything like blue whites? I got a nagging memory of seeing that when I was a kid. Miniature golf with red grass? Eh, worth checking out anyway. So our cabbie does have a record, and it's a nasty one. He was a gay basher, literally. Assaulted patrons at two local gay bars. Oh, and here's a real surprise. DUIs. One more, and he would have lost his hack license. We've got traces of turpentine on the shirt. Pins down the accelerant used. Turpentine on both the can and the shirt. Links don't come much stronger. Hey, what's up? We've confirmed Ed is no longer at his Phoenix address, but the PD there has no lead on any subsequent address, much less a current one. But I think we know he was somewhere in Vegas last night. Still working on that. Shouldn't be much longer, though. I'll give it a shot. Check back later.
Yeah, if you can believe it. Two using red artificial turf. One's been abandoned for a good long while. You can go ahead and check that one out for trespassers, and if you find anybody, come on back and I'll get you a search warrant. What do you know? This is the first time I got the windmill hole in one. Close, dude, but no cigar. They call me Ed Freeborn. Is in Born Free, like the old song, Free as the Wind. Not trespassing, passing through. Yo, since when is Vegas a police state? Chen Darms in this town ought to know all about citizens having a bum run of luck. Bum is right. Dude, that's all you get now. Dude, that's all you get now. With fingerprints at the crime scene and his record? Yes, indeed. I'll see your warrant and raise it an APB. That property's been in litigation since the Rat Pack was still in town. I'll see what I can do, but it may take some time. Whoa, that is eerie. But then they say everybody's got a doppelganger. Well, let's go downtown for a little talk. Somebody who looks just like me has some questions for you. I already told you, my brothers. The correct designation is Freeborn, Ed Freeborn. <laughs> yeah, right. Like the old song. I wonder what song your fingerprints will sing if we check them. Now that is cold. Stone cold. Hey, this is supposed to be a town that understands second chances. I'm just one more dude trying to start over. Finish my parole clean. Check it out, you don't believe me. My what on where? He's dead, by the way. Technical term for that's homicide. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't know a damn thing about any cabbie or fire or... Where'd the hell this go down? Outside a foundry. Big metal sculptures are stored there. Oh, yeah, sure, I've been there. See, I've been helping these crazy artsy-fartsy gals put up flyers for some whacked-out project of theirs. I've been helping them on this art deal, helping build it. So yeah, we used our share of turpentine on the thing. Probably got that crap all over me. These gals are, well, they're not just into art, they're into each other, comprendo. They've been putting this installation together. They call it a fire temple. They've been planning on being part of this big old wild festival out in the desert next month. So that terp can, it might have come from their pad. 
Deborah, she's Ms. High and Mighty Tribal Leader, self-appointed. And Liz, bills herself as Bridget the Fire Goddess. She's got a real pyro Jones, Liz does. Maybe she knows how your cabbie got burned. Yeah, maybe she does. Got an address? No prob. Just cause I got no fixed place of residence, don't mean I ain't a good citizen. At the Windmill Suite, the miniature golf park. Why don't you check with the couple hundred golfers who played through last night? Hey, you don't pick some deserted tourist trap to crash in cause you're looking for company. I'm not into brand names, and anyway, I'm more of a boot kind of dude. Isn't that enough questions for now? Kind of like to get back to the old windmill suite before someone else claims it. Ah, uh, sorry, Ed. You're not charged with anything right now. But you'll have to make do in the uh, holding cell suite till we've checked out your story. Look familiar? Picture her with her face circled on a scorched flyer. Nick Stokes, Las Vegas Crime Lab. My partner and I have a few questions for you. Well, sure. But could you tell me what this is about? The crime lab doesn't drop by every day. Isn't that a funny name? I'm sure I'd remember it if I'd heard it. And I don't and haven't. Oh, him. He's just this, this character who crashed with us a while. Why? What's he done? What's going on? Not really, but sort of. Look, he's just a guy who answered one of our flyers. We're after people to join our, well, we call it a tribe, for an art festival out in the Black Rock Desert. Here, take one of our flyers. Ed was down on his luck, and my roommate Liz, she's always been a soft touch. So, anyway, we gave him some space to crash in. Only I insisted it would be an exchange for him working on our installation. After a few days, I didn't like much having him around, but Liz insisted. She's got a streak. Stubborn. Liz? Your roommate? Yes, yes, she's my, uh, partner. In the art project? But let me think. Since we tossed Ed out on his backside a couple days ago, well, we haven't seen hide nor hair of him. Or anyway, I haven't. Which is no great loss. If you don't mind, we'll take you up on your offer to take one. I see him right over there. Do you, partner? Excuse us a moment. Shirt pocket? Dead? What are you talking about? Did you say cab driver? Oh, how, how horrible. But surely that doesn't have anything to do with me, with us. Liz and I, we put flyers everywhere, all over Vegas. An art tribe needs artists and we plastered the place. So this cabbie, he could have got that flyer just about anywhere. Possibly, but on this particular flyer, your face is circled with the word, if you excuse me, bitch, beside it. Does a cab driver named Bob ring a bell? Uh, it, it doesn't ring anything. So he scribbled something nasty next to a woman's picture, so what? Do I have to tell you there's an army of weirdos out there? Misogynistic a-holes? Look, I have work to do. Art to create, actually. Are we done? Liz? Why, she's in the backyard working on her, uh, our fire temple.
crime scene. Are you kidding? How much are you people going to put me through? I reported it myself. It was a damn accident, and hell, I said I'd pay for the goddamn fence. Sorry, I don't mean to lose it or anything, but our neighbors are born-again tight asses who don't exactly love living next door to an alternative lifestyle couple. Why don't you explain to them what discrimination means and tell them to back the hell off? Oh, uh, sorry. I thought... the f fire... anyway. Yes, yes, this is our fire temple. We were planning to take it out to the festival. What? Did I say... <laughs> sorry, I'm just... just tired. So many stupid hassles today. Anyway, there's still a lot left to do, but yes, we are still planning to take it out to the festival. Why? Ed? Sure, I know Ed, but I didn't know his name was... Anyway, sure, yes, Ed was helping us out with the temple, but he... Look, he's just another one of these free spirits. Took off. I have no idea where. Why? Is he... Is he in some kind of jam? If you define jam as having his fingerprint found at a murder scene, yeah. On a turpentine can, to be specific. A can Ed said may have belonged to you. Murder? Look, I can't believe Ed would say anything like that. Are you saying he tried to blame something on me? No. No way. No way in hell. Well, you get to know people after a while, you know? And I know Ed. And Ed just wouldn't. Well, what do you think? I'm an artist. Look at how much painting I have to do. You're a detective. See if you can deduce if I'd have a use for turpentine. Bob is the bastard who's been harassing Deborah. He's a Neanderthal with a taxi cab. Why are you asking me about that lowlife? That lowlife is the victim someone burned to death in a cab using the accelerant turpentine. His remains were discovered in the foundry yard in the commercial district not far from here. That's... that's sick. That is really sick. Is he... you mentioned murder before. Oh. God. I can't say I'm sorry he's gone, but I wouldn't wish a death like that on anybody. Let me think. Uh, nine and ten. Well, I would have been out walking. I do that a lot. After dark, when it's cool. Alone? After dark? Yes, alone. Why not? I'm a big girl. I can take care of myself. Maybe. I don't know. I didn't stop and chat with anybody or anything. Or see anybody else out walking. Sometimes I just like to be by myself. Like now, for instance. Are we through here? Not my cell. Must be yours. Hey, Sarah's in the garage. Wanted me to let you know she's got the cab ready. Brass out. Okay, partner. You heard the man. I'll follow your lead. You been to the garage yet? There you are. I've already pulled out the front seat. The rest is all yours. That's a gay bar over on East Sahara. A trendy one. Or so I hear. Not the right tool for this.
Not the right tool for this. Too bad it's only a partial print. Still, pardon the pun, we may get a match. Ah, GPS device. Should be able to download our cabbie's route directly from this. Good match. Record of fire-related misdemeanors, most recently fire damage to her neighbor's fence. This places our friendly neighborhood fire goddess in the cab sometime before the fire.
Good job, partner. What's cooking? Hey, Gris. Cooking up a storm in here. Our partner just confirmed the match matches our current holding cell celebrity, Ed. So there's evidence of Ed Danville both inside and outside of the cab. Coincidence? Could be. I've seen stranger things happen. And we've got a few other leads. So what exactly did Ed light up with that match? We'll find out. First of all, we'll see if he smokes. And I don't even care what. Later, Chris. Print belongs to a Randall Watchy, a convicted pedophile. Hold on a minute. Records show Randall was put away a month back. I don't figure he was catching calves from his cell block. GPS log has Bob driving through town before making his last stop of the night. Or ever. There are security cams all along this route. Good chance one may have picked up our perp. I'll ask Brass to go after any footage. Now this is interesting. Looks like our cabbie deposited a check for $500. Written to him by Deborah. We need to find out how somebody harassing a party winds up getting payment from that party. Not yet. Check back. Direct evidence of Liz inside of the cab. Both ladies a possible source of turpentine, and the cabbie's history adds fuel to the fire. He's on his way to interrogation now. Who and where? Slow down, my brother. Take a step back before you go blaming that on me. I took a cab a couple of days ago, Saturday I think, but I didn't ask the guy his name. Maybe it's your guy, maybe it ain't. We found a used match with your print on it in the cab. So maybe it is the cabbie who got burned, but so what? I smoke him when I got him, but what's that mean in the great scheme? Now that is harsh. I do odd jobs for cash. I can afford the occasional ride. Anyway, those lesbos, pardon my French, they were climbing all over each other. And not in a good way. Liz, she was all pissed off at Deb for God knows what and raving on about needing a cleansing. Next thing, Liz is lighting some pagan ritual fire that got way the hell out of hand and damn near burned the neighbor's fence down. Anyway, I tried to help put the thing out, and for my trouble, got Liz climbing all over my ass, also not in a good way. She said, get out, get the hell out of here, all freaked out, and man, I got... This cab was on the corner, and I just grabbed it and told the cabbie, stop at the nearest bar. The Random Room, it's called. Oh, round four, maybe five. Closer to five, I think. 
When do you think? When Miss Pyromaniac 1999's fire got out of control. That broad is brutal, man. She is out there. I can spare a few for the cause. Hey, like I said, you don't have to have a 9 to 5 to be a good citizen. But if you find burn patches, remember, I was playing Citizen's Fire Brigade for that hot les. No, that's everything. So, when do I check out of that holding cell and get back to my windmill, my brother? We'll get back to you. This puts Ed at the crime scene. Of course, he already told us he was there distributing flyers. How did you guys find out about that? Liz, I suppose. Listen, you want to know something about me? Ask me. We went out a couple times back in high school. He seemed like a nice guy at first, before the real Bob started coming out. Freaking racist, flaming homophobe. Back then I hadn't come to terms with my, uh, sexual orientation, but I knew Nazi talk when I heard it. I dumped Bob's bigoted butt like the day before prom. And let's just say he didn't take it well. But you know, that's ancient history, right? Only some people never quite drag themselves out of high school, huh? Anyway, maybe two weeks ago. He must have got hold of one of our flyers, because he started calling me. First, he pretended to be nice and asked me out. For old times' sake, you know? And that's when you let him know about your sexual orientation. Not at first. I just tried to let him down easy. Said I was in a long-term committed relationship. And then he snaps. His voice all different, sarcastic nasty as hell and he says what with some dyke so he knew all along about liz and me maybe ed told him maybe ed handed him a flyer you'd have to ask ed about that and then the calls started obscene abusive nightmare abuse and i had his calls blocked and then he kept driving up and down past my house in his cab it was awful really disturbing i was scared half to death You bet your ass I did. Not that it did any good. I guess you people don't think it's harassment when somebody like me gets hassled. Actually, we do. Of course, you don't need our help now. He won't be hassling you again, will he? So that's what I get for being honest with you people? So that's what you do with a victim like me? You make me out a suspect. Well, maybe I'm not shedding any tears for Bob, but I had nothing to do with what happened to him. Listen, I know it sounds crazy, but after I dumped him back in high school, he'd corner me in the hall and harp about the money he spent on prom. The limo, the rented tux, the corsage, how I owed him. So I thought, pay him off, pay him back. So I go out to that cab and say, how much to get you the hell out of my life? He says, not for a million bucks, baby. I say, I'll give you $500 to just go away. And he says, done. And I did. And then he kept coming around anyway. You don't need one, far as I'm concerned. Go for it. Nothing to hide here. Same kind of matchbook we found in the cab. Minus the soot.
You're on the right wavelength, partner. But that's not the brand of shoe that left the crime scene print. I only have the one pair of running shoes. Sorry to disappoint. Well, that's nothing to call the media about. I just got tired of that character haunting our house and making a wreck out of Deborah. So I climbed in that cab and asked for a ride over to the nearby strip mall. And on the way, I really tore him a new one. Said if he didn't leave us alone, I'd get a restraining order on his pasty white ass. Then the a-hole flares up and his eyes pop out and his veins stick out and he's spewing all kinds of vile, foul crap at me. Turns out lezzies like me are ruining this great country. All the while, he's still driving, but his eyes are on me in the rearview mirror, and now he's going about 50. So I wait for him to run out of steam and then calmly tell him, I will call the cops if he doesn't stop the car. I'm digging into my purse for my cell at the time. So he slams on the brakes and pulls over and throws open the door and tosses my butt right out onto the pavement, which must have been when and how I lost those matches, right? Anyway, he roars off and leaves me in a rough neighborhood, thank you very much. You know, I'm not sure. Six, maybe? Or nine, or ten, maybe? You can try to squeeze me into your timetable all you want, champ. But the inconvenient truth is, I didn't torch that bastard. I have an artistic penchant for fire imagery, but that doesn't make me a pyro or a killer. Based on what? Let me see that thing. Ah, hell with it. Just get it done so I can get back to it. Man, can't get used to that high-class handle for Freeborn. But, uh, anyway, yes, sure. Ed was around all during the time Bob was making an ass of himself around us. And he also mentioned a cab driver he handed a flyer to lost it when he saw Deborah's picture. Later, Ed confirmed our stalker was the same guy. Oh. Well, it's not like I marked it on the calendar. About two weeks ago? No, he didn't like the guy's nonsense any better than we did loudmouth bully and bigot. Ed sort of laid back, but for him, he was pissed all right. You're on the right track, partner, but that's not the brand of shoe that left the crime scene print. Okay, we have two lesbians and one used condom. How exactly does that add up? This is important evidence. Be sure and check all sides for Trace.
I don't know, neighbor kids who sneaked in for a quickie? I mean, that structure is in our backyard. Could be anybody. But me or Deborah, of course. Well, I wouldn't like you to. You can't do that without some kind of warrant, right? That shouldn't be hard to get. You want to look good in this thing? I'd start cooperating. What a charmer you are. <laughs> yes, yes. Go ahead. A man's got to do what a man's got to do. Or so I hear. Okay, we got lucky and located some security cam footage from a business along our roasted cabbie's route. Sarah will have it for you in the lab. That's all I have to say for now. He's on his way to interrogation now. Dude, that's all you get now. Hey guys, your hunch paid off. Here's a hunk of reality TV that you're gonna really get into. There might be visual evidence on this tape. Play the video to watch the whole thing, then Use the controls to look frame by frame. If you find a frame that reveals new evidence, you can click to enhance it. Not much interesting on this frame. Hello! Check out that poncho design. We've seen that before. Remember? Nice going, partner. Nice work. Swabbing this condom inside and out should give us two sets of DNA, thanks to body fluids from both partners. We've confirmed Liz engaged in heterosexual intercourse in the Fire Temple. Well, Ed was definitely one of the two to tango. Hey, Gris. Check this out. 
Looks like Liz and Ed generated some heat in the old fire temple. The fire goddess consummated with Mr. Free as the wind? An elemental attraction, so the evidence says. Wonder who initiated it. Well, wouldn't you say that air stokes fire, Nick? Yeah, I get it. <laughs> Let's go, partner. I've said all I'm going to say for now. Hey, what's up? He's on his way to interrogation now. What happened? Didn't work out for you? What makes you think I was with that lesbo? Huh? A little condom told us. So, since when is trying for a conversion get you a flag on the play? So, we did the nasty ad in the artsy temple. So what? Don't tell me sex is illegal in Sin City now. No, but setting cab drivers on fire can get you pulled over. Maybe Liz solicited your help to protect Deborah from a known gay basher. Hey, Deborah's a major pain in the ass bone, you dig? So an old flame of hers gives her some grief. Why should I give a crap? So an old flame of hers goes up in smoke. That, too, I could give a damn about. And you can stir in Liz the Les... more trouble than she's worth. Or otherwise, why would I be sleeping in the windmill suite? Because Deborah caught you bumping uglies with her one and only? Just a guess. They ripped while you were getting away. Or should I say trying to. Plus, we have your print on the turpentine can. Also on the match used to give the cabbie a light. You got wax in your ears, dude? I already explained all this. I had a smoke in the cab earlier. I was around turpentine all the time helping Liz with the temple. Get it? As for tearing my pants, thinking back, that must have happened when I went out to that foundry for a gander at those sculptures. Squeeze through the fence to get a better look. Must have happened then. I told you before, I was spreading flyers for the fire goddesses, trying to recruit the young and confused for their tribe. You're spreading something right now, but let's move on. Could be you're looking at the only innocent party in this fire fest. Talk to those crazy bitches who threw me out. One obsessed with purifying by fire, the other the object of your dead cabbie's infections. Last I saw him, Liz was begging to get back in Deborah's good graces, saying she'd do anything for Deb if she took her back. Anything. And then poof. One cabbie turned crispy critter. Well, thanks for your sensitive insights. That's it for now. Poncho matches the one seen on the security cam tape. And what do we have here? A singed area. Let's find out where this poncho came from. Not the right tool for this. Not the right tool for this. This damage could easily have resulted from a flash burn. These synthetic fibers were exposed to enough heat to melt the ends, but only for a very short exposure. A flash fire. We know the ladies play with fire, so this could have happened under normal circumstances. But our video evidence argues otherwise. 
how many people have this same poncho design? So Liz plays with fire, huh? Bring her in and apply a little heat. Let her feel the burn. You have a record of fire-related misdemeanors and are currently building something called a fire temple, plus your fingerprint and turpentine were found at the scene of a murder by immolation. Combustible stuff, Liz. For you, this is all about science, right? Reading the evidence. But you need to look through my artist's eyes to understand that I couldn't have done this. To me, fire is cleansing, a ritual of rebirth, phoenix from ashes. Would I waste something so precious on a sack of human excrement like Bob? Oh, I don't know. Sacks of human excrement rate high on my list of things needing cleansing. You knew Bob was a gay basher and was harassing Deborah. You were taking steps to protect your lover. You hailed Bob's cab for a ride. After a while, had him pull over, doused him with turpentine, and did a little cleansing on him. No. I confronted him about his harassment, yes, but he's the one who got violent. He threw me out of his cab. Must have been drunk out of his mind. Guys, get serious. We're artists. Gentle people. We don't destroy. We create. Yeah, right. With fire. Didn't I say six? No, wait. We drove for a while. Maybe closer to 6.30? So when did things first uh, heat up between you and Ed, Liz? Well, that's just nonsense. You know my orientation. DNA doesn't lie, Liz. We found a used condom used by Ed and you. Fire Temple Gate swing both ways? I think you talked your new lover into helping you do more than just create art. Who knows? Maybe he gets a kick out of setting fires, too. Anyway, you brought the turpentine and the matches, and Ed doused Bob with the turpentine and lit the fire. And you're supposed to be a scientist? You're adding two and two and getting 48. Okay, okay, so Ed and I got hot and heavy one night. Too many stars and too much wine, and Deborah caught us at it. And she didn't know that I was by, and she just went off the deep end. I've been struggling to put the pieces back together ever since, which is why I kicked Mr. Freeborn out on his neo-hippie ass, okay? Ed's a user, a manipulative jerk who preaches freedom and then does everything he can to control you. I'm on to him now, but even when I wasn't, I wouldn't commit... commit murder. My God, I'm an artist, not an arsonist. I've said all I'm going to say for now. He's on his way to interrogation now. Dude, that's all you get now. Why, yes, that's mine. I misplaced it some time ago. Where on earth did you find that? I didn't put it there. Liz might have borrowed it. She works later hours on the project than I do. I've known her to keep warm in that poncho, come to think of it. Last time you remember seeing the poncho? Really, I don't know. I don't wear it much anymore. In this climate, it was a little heavy. But just guessing, a month ago, maybe. Why not? 
I told you before, I had nothing to hide. Nice to know. Well, this may not have anything to do with anything, but late Tuesday night, when Liz and I got home, things got kind of moved around in here. Not like the furniture had been rearranged or anything, just kind of off kilter. I thought maybe somebody'd broken in, so we gave the place a good looking over. Only thing we found missing was a few dollars, and I mean a few, fifteen. Liz would kill me if she heard me say, but I think it was our friendly free spirit helper, Ed. Bob's harassment gives Deborah a murder motive, and she owns that singed poncho that matches the video footage. All right, let's bring her in and hear her story. We'll start with the dead cabbie, who was your spurned high school prom date, a known gay basher who has lately made making your life miserable his hobby. Your singed poncho was found at the crime scene, likely worn by whoever gave Bob his Viking funeral. Skipping the step of him being dead first. How many times do I have to tell you? I haven't seen that poncho for a month, at least. I haven't the slightest idea how it got burned or wound up out in the fire temple. And Liz says the same. Well, we had another fight. Sort of the aftershock following the big quake. If you've ever been in a relationship that had a bad bump, well, you'll understand. Anyway, Liz stormed out and was gone so long that I got worried. Got in my car and drove around for hours looking for her. Geez, I don't know. I mean, I was so upset, I'm not sure. Close to six, I think. So you were out driving around? Yeah, yeah, I went everywhere. All the places we usually go, you know? I got home maybe midnight, and Liz came in about ten minutes later. Really, I don't know. I hardly knew where I was at that point, and I sure don't remember now. You already know our high school history. Add that to him being a bigot, full of hate, who came out of a hideous, dysfunctional family. What it comes down to? He couldn't handle me choosing a woman over him. So finally enough was enough. The phone call, harassment, the cab, constantly driving by, a stalker on wheels. You flagged him down, you got in the cab, you said you wanted to talk, only you were burning mad, enough to burn him out of your life. Permanently. All that turpentine around your place? Plus, you know your way around fires, thanks to Liz. Bob wouldn't cooperate, so you lit a fire under him. Literally. I did not. He was a beast, a monster. But taking a life is not my way. It's not who I am. It's against everything I believe, foreign to every fiber of my being. What relationship? He was just this freak passing through who stopped long enough to help us with our art project and, you know, put up flyers and stuff. So you didn't know things had gotten hot and heavy between them? Behind your back? You make it sound like, like, like an affair. All it was was a night where things got out of hand is all. Liz and that, that freak got together one time. One time. He got her drunk and laid a smooth line on her and, and, anyway, that happened Saturday night. And I saw them together. And Liz and me, we had this big knockdown drag out. Not physical, just verbal, but a big fight, okay? And she promised me it was just this one time. It would never, ever happen again. She went and set this bonfire to show the fling was flung and she would cleanse herself and our space of the creep. And, like I said, she was kind of drunk. Fire about got out of control. Anyway, Ed crawls out of his hole somewhere and tries to pitch in. With stopping the fire, Liz starts screaming at him and he books it. Never came back. She was crying and I was crying. Not that any of this is any of your business. Well, we got the fire out at least. Neighbor's fence a little worse for the wear.
I already gave it to Nick. Meet him out at the miniature golf course. Oh, and Ed's story about taking a cab to the bar on Saturday? Didn't check out. Good thinking, nailing him on the specifics during questioning. Cab company has no record of a fare there on that day. Hey, partner. I checked out Ed's bedroll in the windmill. Nothing useful in it. If he had any other clothes, he got rid of them. Appears Ed didn't like having a hole in the middle of his suite. Stuff something in there. Man, what are you, the club pro? Didn't hear the ball come out the other end though, so let's take a look. I can see something stuffed in there. One more ball ought to do the trick. Hole in one, or maybe one more in the hole. If they had MVPs in miniature golf, you'd be it, Slick. That's a tightly rolled, rubber-banded wad of money that was stuffed down there in Ed's little bank. This may answer the question of why the cabbie had no money on him. Or in his vehicle. Good job. This area is clean. The hair with the money belonged to our Vic. Of course, he was bald, so I don't even want to know where this hair came from. Better golf score than I've seen in a while. Think we should have another chat with Freeborn Edsel, don't you? Funny strange or funny hysterical? Hysterically strange. My partner here scored a hole in one with two balls. You lost me at hello. Um, oh, you mean my hidey hole. Well, sure, no problem, my brothers. I can explain that. No, let me. After Liz tossed you out, you had no place to stay and no money. 
So you came back Tuesday night, you found your hostess is gone, and you helped yourself to 15 bucks. Oh, and for warmth on a cool Vegas night, you stole Deborah's poncho. I don't know what you've been smoking, Captain Brass, but it can't be legal. You knew that poncho and the record of harassment would implicate Deborah in Bob's burning. And you were pretty pissed off at the cab driver anyway for just generally being a small-minded jerk. You know, a free spirit like you. You took the turpentine, too. Evidence pre-selected to put the blame on the fire goddesses, settling a grudge or two even as you built your bankroll from nothing to something. It was easy to find Bob's cab to hail. Hell, he kept driving up and down in front of Deborah's. You told the cabbie to take you to the foundry yard. When you got there, you doused him with turpentine and threatened to set him on fire if he didn't give up his cash. He gave you the money, but you lit him up anyway. The flash fire singed your hairs and the poncho. Once out of the cab, you ditched the turpentine can and slid through the fence. In a hurry to get away, you tore your jeans. Then you ditched your clothes and shoes and headed back to Deborah's where you planted the poncho in the temple. So you got his money, but you really wanted to get even with the women, and maybe with Bob himself. You got it wrong. I doused the guy, okay, and he handed over his money, but I didn't want it. I was just trying to scare him out of being such a bastard to Deborah, right? I lit a match, but I was just trying to scare him. He went for my hand and the match dropped and we both got burned. And you just grabbed the money to save it from the flames. Be cool! It could have happened that way, right? And if it didn't, if I did do it the way you say, then all I really did was rid this beautiful planet of one ugly bigot. And you should give me a medal, not put my ass away. Maybe I was sticking up for those fire goddesses and their lifestyle. And mine! All we really wanted to do was live free, to spread the love. And the bigots of the world, the bobs of the world, they're the ones that deserve to get burned. You said it yourself, Mr. Freeborn. You and Bob both got burned. And where you're going, you'll find a lot of people living alternative lifestyles, including white supremacists like the late cab driver. You'll have plenty of opportunity to spread the love. Well, that's one dude I don't mind roasting in the can. All this talk of heat, though, I'm ready for a soda. You want one? I'll meet you in the conference room right after Grissom gives you his eval. All right, here's your evaluation. For evidence, you found everything there was to find. For hints, you didn't need any at all. And at the end of the day, you followed the evidence to a clear conclusion. I can't argue with that. Good work. You did very well. Though, as I noted, there's still some room to improve. I'm giving you an above-average grade. And by the way, thank you for all the new specimens you found for my collection. <laughs>